Hi, welcome. This is the first in a series of uh, me showing you uh, how to paint, but also how to establish and develop the process of a, a portrait painting. Now, I'm always very daunted when I first started painting, how, how on earth would I ever get to a stage where I could do a painting like this? But actually, if you break things down in straightforward state, you don't have to be daunted by the paint. If you think of it like drawing, which we can all do a bit of drawing, sometimes that's a good place to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to develop your work from a drawing basis and then work towards colour washes, tonal washes, and then eventually we'll get to the point where we can add the final details. So first of all, get to know your sitter. Find out what you want to paint, who you want to paint. Find out what they want. If it's a, In my case, this is a um, commission. So I've got to really find out what she really wants out of the portrait. So I was lucky before the lockdown, I was able to go and spend some time with the sitter and find out the kind of lighting, the, the sit, the pose, and we work something out together. So I always like to take a sketchbook with me. And in this case, this sketchbook has quite a number of my commissions and quick sketches. And at the moment, I quite like using the Conte Sanguine because um, you get a nice sketch, sketchy quality, it's quite soft. So you're able to still talk and get to know your, your, your sitter, but at the same time, the pencil does the work and, and your, your perception, your, your sort of, the way you look at the sitter can come out through the medium. So I always start off like that, but unfortunately I'm not being able to get back. So I'm very much relying on photography. And luckily when I do sittings, I take lots of photographs as well. So I'm able to discuss the different poses, the different lighting, the different look, gestures, etc. So in this case, it was decided that this particular portrait of a photograph should form the basis to the painting. So I'm going to be working from this. And notice how I've established a tonal quality, very chiaroscuro, black and white. Okay, so you've got something structured to work from. And I always think if you get the lighting right in your painting, the rest quite often follows the mood and the kind of the quality of the work follows, I think. So first of all, obviously using this piece, I'm going to start drawing it. Often I would start painting directly, but it takes a bit of confidence to get to that stage. And obviously that can be taught as well. But for this one, just for beginners, get used to just, first of all, sketching out the actual proportions of the head. Okay. You might start off with the oval shape. In this case, it's, she's got a particular shape of face, very prominent cheekbones, and then establish where the eyes go. And in my case, I'm really sort of working on the structure. They're quite large eyes. And then we've got a nose and a triangle between the eyes and the nose. New proportions here. I'm happy with the way it is. It's a simple drawing. It's got the structure in place. So what I will do now is I will use a bit of yellow ochre and burnt sienna and then from that I'm going to be blending them in to the surface of the, the, the linen canvas so that it's using plenty of white spirit. Well, the sort of white spirit I'm going to use is low odour so I'm working in a very thin way so the luminosity of the canvas comes through. So what I will do is make sure I've got big container, metal container with the white spirit in, and I've got a few wide flat brushes. Hog hair brushes are the best because they really do sort of work the pigment into the canvas nicely. And notice I've not got much paint. I don't need much for a canvas this size. Just remember I'm putting it on very, very thinly, like a glaze, so that the pencil marks still show through. So I'm gonna start off by dipping my brush into the white spirit. I'm going to take a bit of this lovely, you can see how this light yellow ochre, how light it is. It's artist quality, Michael Harding. And I'm going to start applying the paint and a little bit goes an awful long way. And I can see, if you look at it, I can see the image through, okay? The pencil I've used is an, a 2B pencil, so it's not too soft. So it doesn't smudge too much, but a little bit of smudging underneath actually works quite nicely. A little bit goes an awful long way. 
And because I'm painting it thinly, it means it dries quicker. In oil painting, you tend to work from thin paint to fat paint, so th from thin to fat. It gives a lovely warm glow for which to then think about adding the tonal elements. But it's a, an absolutely marvellous starting point, this warm glow, because when you start adding the cooler greys into it to create the grisaille or the tone in the face, it really does sort of contrast nicely. What I sometimes do is I maybe start off with a completely different tinted background. I might use greys and bluey greys or browny greys as a starting point, cooler shades, and then bring the warmth in. But this time I'm starting off with the warmth and then I'm going to bring the cool out. An old sheet, because we've got plenty of them, they get cut up, old clothes, and I use it quite often to reduce, to take things away. So I've added colour, now I'm going to take it away. I'm going to start picking out some of the tones in the face. You see how she's starting to look a bit more three-dimensional. Okay. I'm loving that little streak of white down the hair and the way the locks of the hair sort of come through like that and then the way the hair sort of falls across the shoulders. I'm noticing little touches around by the chin and the cheekbone here. These are little points of reference for me to help me. So I'm actually drawing into the surface with my... I've got a range of colours. I've got some white. I've got a little bit of fallow uh, green, or it could be viridian green, and I've got some Payne's grey as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and make a reference to my image that I've got. You know, in times of lockdown, you can't always have the person next to you. Obviously, it's better if you can. And I'm going to have a look at the mid-tones, the darker tones, and the lighter tones. I'm going to keep it pretty straightforward and simple to start off with. So what I'm going to do, I've got my bit of old bed sheet, I've got my palette knife, I'm going to mix a very simple mid-tone. So I'm going to get plenty of white and I'm going to bring a little bit, tiny bit of Payne's Grey into this. A little bit goes a long way using my palette knife to mix it thoroughly. And this mid-tone I'll be using across the whole face initially and then I'll be bringing out the shadows and then the highlights. I'm bringing a little bit of this viridian, or as I say, it's kind of a nice sort of really rich bluey green. It's actually, I think it's a fallow green, and fallow is quite a bully. It kind of, it dominates everything you put into it. So you've got to work, work with it quite carefully. So this mid-tone is going to be the basis to a lot of what I'm going to add to the face. So I'm going to thoroughly mix it up, plenty of white, until I get to a a layer that I'm happy with. Mix a, just a glaze, and I'm going to add a glaze over the whole lot, okay? A nice mid-tone glaze. And that just gets the whole painting moving. I think sometimes, if you just st stick into one area, obviously if you make mistakes, you can always, if you just sort of paint one area, you can lose sight of the whole thing. So I love that, that glow that comes from it, that nice cool glow. It's very flat at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to have a go at um, getting some darker tone in there. So I'm gonna now go for, have a look at my work. I mean, I'm trying to talk to you and look at the figure. Normally what I'd be doing, I'd be looking over here at this the sitter right next to me. I'm gonna start using actually my brush to mix and I'm gonna start bringing in a little bit more of this Payne's Grey. It's a nice cool black. It's a nice translucent cool black and I'm going to start bringing in some shadows into areas of the face that I want to bring to suggest volume. I can still see the drawing underneath. Remember what I said at the beginning, drawing is important gives me the security of what I've got going on. And you can see how it starts to create a sense of shape and volume. 
Again, very subtle at this stage, but I can see it as an artist. I can, I can feel it coming together. And if that's happening, I'm happy. Uh, as you can see, I've developed the, uh, the grisaille, the, the tonal background in more detail. I've kept to the uh, range of tones from mid-tones to some suggestions of light and suggestions of dark. And what I want to do today is to bring in a little bit more detail, try and sharpen up the dark areas and bring in a little bit more highlight just to bring the whole painting to life. Now, I quite enjoy mixing with my brush. I know initially I started off using a palette knife, but now I like to just bring my brush into it and start adding those extra little bits of detail using a darker colour there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus down on the eyes and try and bring that up to some detail using a range of brushes. And there's little hints of highlight around the face, the edge of the face where the light has caught the face, and a little bit at the top of the eyelash and around the edge of the bridge of the nose They're on the side here. So it's starting to come together nicely. I'm happy with that. The important thing is, by doing it in stages, it starts giving you the confidence to go and go to the next stage and get it right. Everyone paints differently. This is just my method. I make marks, it's my signature style. You will make marks in completely different ways and I wouldn't expect in a tutorial like this for everyone to start painting like that. That would be, I'd be doing my job really badly using my commission. You can see I've created the grisaille, a little bit of detail using the subtle sort of greyish turquoise tones which creates a nice backdrop in which to add flesh tones. Now I'm going to show you the palette, the palette I'll be using for this particular portrait. Okay so if you come over here you can see the range of colours that I've created. Okay um, there's a lot more colours on here than you probably need if you're starting out but I just wanted to show you what I would tend to use throughout the duration. So let's start off with the, the earth range. You've got yellow ochre, but raw sienna, burnt umber. We've got our flake white, which is a great mixing white. We've got lemon yellow, cadmium yellow. So lemon is a cooler yellow. Uh, we've got cadmium red, which is a warmer red, going towards the more bluey reds like alizarian crimson. Um, turqu and then we move towards the blues, moving from turquoise through to ultramarine. Uh, that, so this is what I'll be using. I've started to mix things up already. Um, I have cheated a bit in the sense I've got a, a ready mixed fleshy tone, but you can mix that quite easily using um, sort of white and then bringing in tints of the crimson and a little bit of the cadmium as well. Okay, that's a slightly richer, darker tone here and then bringing in maybe some yellow ochre and maybe some gray and you can gradually get there. But I, I quite like to have lots of it ready mixed so I can refer back to it. But the color I want to show you how to mix first of all, which is great for adding sort of tints to taking tones down to then highlighting tones as well and colors, is we've got a bit of ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit of burnt umber there's no black, by the way, and the two mix together to create a very dark shade. And you can move the range of tones from that quite easily to lighter shades of grey, if you like. I've, and I've already pre-mixed a whole range of different greys as well, which I'll incorporate with the flesh tones. And then I can always dip in to the yellows, the crimsons, the yellow ochres and, and I kind of work with a brush and I quite like to work intuitively so I'm going to have a go at just starting off painting directly on the face okay so I'm not putting any detail in as yet that's something that can come later and I'm not trying to make the colors too complicated that can come later 
keep on a fairly limited palette. So the, the massive range of, of colours that I can see on my palettes here, I will not necessarily use straight away, but I can always get a sense of security when I know they're there if I need them. As I say, I tend to work quite intuitively. I'm starting off mixing that grey and mixing some basic sort of flesh tones. It's quite a good start. You can use a palette knife for that, that and the rest of it can be done using your brush, just altering the tones and bringing things out. The good thing about flake white is, flake white, you see, is more translucent. Titanium white is quite rich. And the trouble with the titanium white is, it's chalky, it stands out too much. And it's something that I always save until the very end. Okay, I think the lips are nearly there. Now I'm just gonna focus on the eyes at the moment and I'm gonna work out how to sort of develop them. And you can see, you know, earlier on, we had that initial grisaille sort of grayish blue and I've started to bring in some highlights and color, some slightly stronger flesh tones, shaping the eyelid so it's more three-dimensional as, as you can see I've done here. Um, now I need to make some adjustments and alterations to the eye because I feel as if it's not quite the same as the portrait. So I'll start using a smaller brush and I'll start almost lining the eye and, and, and almost drawing back into it so that I can bring like the shape of the eyelid needs slightly adjusting. So quite often with an eyelid, I might use a, a dark sort of crimson or cadmium red with a bit of black in it or a dark color. So I'm just going to work into the shape here. Okay, you can see it's quite rich and dark, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to tone it down a bit later. I'm going to slightly change that shape there. Okay, which I might have to adjust a bit more later on. Um, I'm going to suggest where the eyelashes come over and then take it down. Okay, you can see I've sort of added some tone, some stronger colour or tone into this underneath of the eye, okay? So that's something that I can work into later on. Uh, they're quite strong and they'll, they'll tone down. Now I'm going to think about the eyelashes. I'm starting to introduce actually, along with my, um, my usual made up black, ultramarine and um, burnt umber, I'm starting to include a little bit of ivory black, which is not too strong, it's a good mixing black. So I'm going to start to actually draw into it to get the shape of the eye more firmly established so it's in keeping with the actual sitter. Sometimes the paint dries out a bit so I sometimes add a bit of linseed oil and it just sort of enables the flow to develop a bit better. So again just drawing it back in, working out where the lashes go and the relationship between the lashes and the eyelid. Okay and also the shadow that's cast underneath. And I'll sometimes even work into the shadow, into the whites of the eye, because really whites of the eye aren't actually white. There's very few, it's only when the light catches them. Um, so sometimes I'll tone that right down and darken it up. And also you get these little touches of shadow just where the, the edge of the eyelid, the tear ducts are shaped. But again, I can come back to those and develop those later. Okay, and you can see it's starting to create a little bit more structure. I'm not putting individual eyelashes on yet. I'm gonna get a flat brush now, and I'm gonna work back into it. I'm sort of jumping the gun a bit, but I even use a little bit of titanium white, because it, it sits on top of the actual. So I've got a little bit here where there's a bit of highlight, and there's a little bit of highlight here, which I quite like, and then there's a little bit of highlight here, just where the light is catching. Because I, when I drew her and, and painted her initially, I had a strong a portable lamp that I shined, day lamp that I shined in her face so that you see the reflection. And I'll also pick in out a little bit of twinkling of light on the edge of the eye. And you'll see the same sort of bluey light coming down just here, which I might need to tone down a bit with more of a bluey. Okay, so again, if it's too much, I can tone it down, but Initially, it's quite good to exaggerate a little bit. Okay, I think the, the eye is nearly there. It needs touching up in places, and I've actually added to the other one as well. Again, sometimes I need to make those very tiny adjustments to, to make sure that um, it looks like the sitter. 
sometimes it might be a little tweak here there or a tweak there but I think I, what I do need to do is thicken up the eyebrows so what I'm going to do is have a go at that looking at my model a um, bit of a dry brush there just to sort of create a bit of surface sort of merges into the, the wet paint there and the other I'm going to just add a bit of definition to the face Again, my paints on this hot day are drying out a bit, so sometimes I'm getting a bit of linseed oil, a bit of white spirit. No odour that is. Okay, that's quite defined. What I was going to show you is you can actually blend using a dry brush. You can blend things out a bit, just so it's less defined. Okay, so it's not so harsh. So I'm using a dry brush just to soften I let the eyebrows into the form itself so they don't look so harsh. I think it's starting to get there, so I'll move on now. I'll probably do the neck. Now I'm going to focus on the hair, thinking about the darker tones, the tonal range, and the structure of those curls and those sort of flowing shapes within the long hair. Um, I can add the highlights later. So I'm sticking with raw rumba. Maybe a little bit of um, ultramarine blue for the, the shadow. And I'm going to use a range of hog hair brushes to um, help me. Those, those curls. But I'll get back to that later. You can actually work back into it with a rag. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to emphasize the way that there's a highlight coming down here. Emphasize some of these um, shapes, the movement of the hair. And what I love about the hair generally painting it, there's a sense of movement in it and it's trying to keep that. So it's not looking at like every single hair is painted. I've always find that a bit almost anally retentive. It can work really beautifully on some photo, on hyper-realist work, but this isn't hyper-realist. This is very much an impression of hair. Get a bit of this Naples yellow. Lovely, rich, bright, warm yellow, and it really reflects the, the way that the light glistens off the hair. You can really feel it. Keeping a, a bristle brush, smaller bristle brush, just suggesting against a dark background. Background is wet, so it blends, and then sometimes just to be able to get it fan brush and subtly softening so it keeps it not harsh you might want the odd glistening highlight I'm using a, a lead white which is a nice thick white just to suggest the odd highlight of hair now I'm starting to work out the background colour to my painting I want to choose a colour that will set off the light coloured hair and the blue eyes. I thought a nice mid-tone grey. So this is titanium white, a little bit of um, ivory black, and we've got a little tiny touch of ultramarine blue. These are all the colours that are actually appearing in quite a large part of the portrait. So I'm gonna take a bit of it and try it out in an area and see how it kind of works. I'm thinking that that works quite well against the hair. So I'll take it up a bit and keep adding it. Sometimes at this stage, I feel it can be changed. If I need to let it change, I can tone it, lighten bits up, darken areas. But I'm looking at that and I'm quite liking the way it really brings out the eyes. Okay, I think it just about there. Obviously there's more finishing touches, get a bit of a fan brush around it just to soften the edges um, so it looks more flowing. Right, hand back. Right, okay. It's just about there. I've still got to work a little bit on the top. Um, get a bit more structure into that and then it's just about finished.